now that the headline's directing what I'm writing rather than, and I feel like I need, I'm, I'm limited and I can only go in a particular direction, which limits the way that the copy's likely to end up. So I've, yeah. I've experienced that where I've kind of made a rod from my own back. I've written a headline and gone, yeah, this doesn't actually really fit now. Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Blake. All right, so I have got Scott Bywater with me. I am really looking forward to today's chat. We've moved in the same circles now for a number of years. Uh, Scott is one of the most sought after and, um, you know, I, I think prominent copywriters in Australia. But it's interesting because... He is is often behind the scenes in a lot of probably the biggest campaigns that you would see, um, and he effectively runs what many regard as the highest level private private marketing group in, in Australia, the Elite Marketers. He's the creator of the online simple email ROI system course that, over the past twenty one years, has written for gurus such as Kerwin Ray, who's been on the podcast, Jay Conrad Levinson of Guerrilla Marketing. Mercola.com and the Learning Annex, as well as James Shramko, who's been on the um, on the podcast. He's spoken at James Superfast Business Event, Dale and uh, Dale Beaumont and Ben Simpkins Mastermind, and he's on a mission to help coaches, consultants, and course creators leverage their most undervalued asset, their email list, without being pushy or salesy. There's a whole bunch of resources that I'll make available. We may as well talk about that now rather than at the end. Um, but mate, I'm stoked to have you on. Yeah, likewise, John. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Awesome. So, mate, I, I've sort of gave some fairly uh, – some some thought as to what I was going to ask you first. And what I'm seeing out there at the moment is obviously with the introduction of AI and you've got, you've got all these people that are using it and everyone's saying about how brilliant it is. But I've – I mean, I don't – I can write copy. I've been studying, you know, copy, probably been to some of the same events that you have with Pete Godfrey, um, you know, and, and learn from some of the best copywriters on the planet. But I read this stuff and I, and, and everyone's talking it up and talking about how amazing it is. You know, you get clients that are going, oh, look, I just wrote this email with ChatGPT. It's really good. And then you read it and you go, that is not good. That is, <laughs> that is, that looks like it's been written by a really enthusiastic intern at best. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and, and I'm sure that there's a way to, to use it with, with a better result than that, but that's the default setting. You know, even the guy that, um, you know, even, even a guy that I've worked with uh, who's, who's done some mentoring with me, I've, I've looked at some of his recent emails and I've gone, you've got to be kidding me. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. And even the guys that write my emails, because I, I've this podcast goes out every two weeks. I've got someone who writes the emails. They send it through to me, and I, you know, I they know how I talk. I edit it so that it's in my voice. We send it out. But at one point, this email came through, and I looked at it, and I wrote straight to the guy that that you know heads the team up, and I went, "Are your team writing my my emails with uh, Chat GPT?" <laughs> and sure enough, they were. Sure enough, they were. So. So I'm sure there's a, there's a better way of using it. I, I've you know obviously dabbled like everyone else has. Uh, it, it certainly appears as if you've um, gone into it a lot deeper than the average copywriter out there. Um, so yeah, that was kind of going to be my step off point. Yeah, <laughs> for, yeah for, for, for ChatGPT, it, it's a really it's a really interesting um, interesting space because I, I find AI to be hugely valuable in many ways. But at the same time, I, I just went through a process actually where because um, where one of my team did a pretty average job on some web copy and I had to go in and I've had to go in and fix it and get it up to speed and all of that sort of thing. And it yep. took a heck of a long time and I was leveraging AI at the same time. Yeah. But, but it took a long time. Like it, it probably took... Before web pages, we're talking like ten to fifteen hours to get it right, and that's after you've done all of the research. So it was wow. it was extensive, and so so the so the starting point was was ChatGPT, and then you guys knocked it into shape from there. 
Well, no, what, what, what the process is, like the normal process I go through, let's say, if, if we're doing things properly, is we'll go through what's called a copy strategy guide and understand the fears, the pains, the desires, the belief, yep. the core story, the unique selling proposition, all of that sort of thing, um, before then interviewing the client and then writing the copy and taking the transcripts from the interviews and then writing the copy. Uh, and it. then I'll use then I'll use a, a platform called Scrivener, uh, which is actually meant for like novel writers and that sort of thing, like nonfiction and fiction writers, not really for copywriters. But it's I'm, yeah, I've heard of that tool before, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm upset. It took me 20 years to discover it because it's like this is like perfect. You know, I just had this gut feeling one day and dove in. And it's like I can just I can just have all my fol- files with the different research concepts on one side and then. And then uh, I can write on the other side and I can split screens and it's, it's just a beautiful piece of software. So all the research sort of goes in there. And then I think the whole, the whole key is that with um, the, the thing that AI can't do is it can't, I mean, it's, it's really smart, but it's really stupid at the wrong, at the same time, right? So it can't think. Um, and that, that is a difference. So, for example, the copy I got back from one of my writers was very, what's the word for it? It was very, like, I looked at it and I go, this could be for anyone. And we put so much time Generic. to get all of this data. And, and he did use, I think he used ChatGPT a bit. Okay, we put so much time in to get this just right. And it's come back and it's just like, I mean, this could be any builder anywhere. Uh, and so I had to look for this particular builder and I'm like, this is, yeah, this is someone who's, you know, used to build, he has built $12 million architectural homes and now he's building homes for anyone and stuff like this isn't in the copy, you know, like it's a father son team. Like there was all these, there was all these nuances, which were so powerful, but they weren't, they weren't integrated into the copy and chat GPT just can't get all that. Um, no. It can help you. Like if you build out a flow and you give it a transcript from the copy and say, hey, I want to write about, like let's say I'm doing a, a process page, just an example for website. I can give it mm-hmm. everything in the transcript that we've talked about yeah, in terms of the process. I can feed that into ChatGPT and I can say, write it like this and give it, use this transcript and write it like a really great transcript, like a really great process page and give it that sample and it'll come back with something, you know, something decent, but you've still got to be, even then, you've got to be a really good editor. Um, so you've got to be able to then go in and go, yeah, and and think through it and, and carve out bits and go, that's not relevant, that's not relevant, that's not relevant. Yeah, it's giving you three paragraphs and you're carving it back to a paragraph. Right, you know, so it's so it's concise and tight and interesting and all that sort of thing. But you've got to understand copy in order to do that because yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't understand it, I, I look at I look at ChatGPT or AI as a little bit like a what's the word for it? A um, uh, yeah, chainsaw. It can be really powerful, but if you don't know how to use it, you'll chop your arm off, right? And you'll do all sorts of all sorts of damage. You know, I saw some text message. Um, the other day that, that you know, uh, it was a service provider sent out to all their clients and it was like this long text message and I swear he lost a lot of clients from it and I swear it was written by ChatGPT. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> you can, I, I can tell straight away. Yeah. I, I had, um, I had uh, Trevor Toecracker on a few months ago. Yeah. And, um, and the, uh, I, I haven't copped any heat from it so maybe I'll say it again, but it's it's like when you're looking at some woman's face and you can tell if she's got like fillers yeah. and stuff, you know, <laughs> like, you know, if you know what good copy looks like, you can look at it and go, oh, no, nah, no way in the world that was written by anything else than chat GPT. You know, like it's, it's just, it's just obvious, you know, it just jumps out at you straight away. And particularly if it starts with, I hope this email finds you well. You know, oh god yeah <laughs> and and then you know and that, and it adds um it adds words like you know enlightening and um and you know delightful and you know just it, it's and and it just puts them in the wrong place and it uses too many and 
Yeah, it's but but again, like you say, unless you understand copy, you know, the biggest thing that I've got from what you've said so far is one, uh, you know, interview clients transcription, and then and then feed the transcription to Chat GPT and give it good instructions as to what to do with it, but that you have to understand what good copy looks like to be able to edit it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you give it good samples too. Like if you're like, hey, I want it to look like this, so use this as your swipe file when you write it. Uh, yeah. If you don't, if you don't direct it like that, it just comes back and it's just like it's slop. And and you want it to act as. So you want to like I would say act as Gary Ben's Avenger or act as. It's good to know you know who the world class, well known copywriters are. Yeah, act as yep. John Carlton or. Um, you know, take these, you know, you give it some John Carlton bullets and go, you know what, those bullets are crap. You know, rewrite them so that they're teaser bullets like this and then it will it will do it. So it's like one of the best examples actually came from, um, uh, I, I heard with ChatGPT, I think it was um, Ben Jones at a recent um, event where he spoke. Uh, it was a, the, I don't know if you know Ben Jones, a YouTube YouTube expert um, from Tom Oh yeah, I, I I spoke to him about I spoke to him not long ago about uh, finding a salesperson for them. Oh yeah, yeah, Ben Jones, yeah, yeah. So they're and they're they're killing at the moment. They're doing they're doing great. But he he's yeah. got some sort of YouTube ads template or something that he's got. And but one of the best examples he gave he says he says it's like if you're in this conference room and you just say hey you say to someone who's working there hey just clean the room. Well, cleaning the room could mean you know, vacuuming. It could mean it could mean you know going in and just you know putting a duster over it. Like it's very open to interpretation, right? And AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to be very specific, and you just say, okay, I want you to clean the coffee cups. I want you to clean the coffee machine. I want you to wipe down you know these these twenty three benches. I want you to vacuum it with this you know with this vacuum cleaner. So it needs to be like super super specific. Otherwise, you need yep. a shit result. Uh, so that's and that that specificity is is what is key to making it work and using transcripts. Yep. You know, because at the end of the day, if you're writing something like there's going to be uh, so much content out there now because of ChatGPT, right? When it's that easy to write, there's just naturally going to be more content. The same as when we got yep. video cameras on our phone. We naturally just got a whole heap more, um, yeah. More there was more videos taken, so now then it becomes. But there's only so many, so much time we've got to read the read the content. So we're gonna we're gonna veer towards quality. So you can still do quality with chat. It can speed it up. It doesn't do it for you, but you've got to plug in. You've got to do it off a transcript. Otherwise, it's not it's not your sales information. It's just some fucking random crap. Sales information that it's just pulled out from the internet, but if it's basically yeah. a transcript, it's you. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's and and it's so easy to get transcripts now because you know you, there's all these bloody things that you can plug into Zoom that transcribe everything, and you can just pop them straight in, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So that's the that's the power of it, and it does give you. It does give you an element. It can give you an element of speed if you know how to, you know, if you know how to use it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. I love that. So, so tell me about what you're. I mean, it, obviously, you're doing a lot of work with people's databases, email lists, sending out email campaigns. What What are you finding are the biggest changes? And and conversely, what is it that's actually working the best? I think anything with email, what, I, what I've always found work, and I think it'll always be the case. I mean, email, like every medium, it, you know, it has, you know, it doesn't get the open rates that it used to get and all of that sort of thing. But it still gets, according to litmus.com, it still gets a 36 to 1 ROI for every dollar that you invest in email. Uh, and, yeah, if I had a gun to my head, and I, and I had to make money for someone fast, and they had a decent sized quality email list. That is where I would, you know, one hundred percent start because it's the it's a low hanging fruit in any business if it's nurtured. But the problem is people people tend to fall into one or two categories. They go, they do the scorched earth approach where they just pitch, 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 and then eventually the email list worth nothing, right? Because if if I call you up every 
you know, every Tuesday and try and sell you, uh, you know, on my network marketing product, pretty soon you, you stop taking my calls. Uh, or yep. they, they do the love letters approach, but they just, you know, they just send lovely content and, you know, it's quality content, all that, but nobody, nobody buys and then they stop doing it. Um, so what I, what I prefer is something, if you can imagine a Venn diagram, is going down the middle of those two and there's something called the third way where we're sending out, we're always leading, not, I mean, occasionally you can send a pitch, you know, a direct pitch, but we're leading with quality content and then we're segueing into a pitch at the end. So every time you get get my email, or at least you know, 80, 90% of the times you get you get the email, you want to open it because you're you're seeing value there for you. Uh, and then and then you've got the option if you want to explore further of downloading a report or buying something or booking in for a consultation or or that sort of thing. So and I think that'll be the case all the time because it doesn't matter how much technology changes. At the end of the day, we're dealing with we're dealing with humans, and uh, you know if if someone is adding value to your life, you're always going to keep yeah you're always going to yeah you're maybe not always but you're far more likely to make time for them. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I I really I, I've done some re-engagement strategies with with email lists. It's often one of the first things that I do, and and there's. There's, I, I talk about the three timelines. There's the, there's the first 90 days that elapses between you making somebody an offer and them buying. And some people don't buy in that 90 days, which in most cases is more than actually do buy. <laughs> so you've got the first 90 days and then you've got between 90 days and say 120 days where you can, where you can send out a bit of a Hail Mary you know the old, um, you know the the close your file email or the nine word email to create some engagement, and then you've got in between the ninety day or, or the hundred and twenty day mark and the two year mark, and there's a whole bunch of things that you can do in there, to because because it, uh, the and I'm sure you would have access to all the same data as me, but the and when I learned this, the whole world changed really because the. The data says to, that there will be 50% of people that will inquire about a particular product or service that will buy within the first two years. But on average, only between 20 and 25 buy in the first 90 days. Yet most people think that, think 90 days is the long game of follow-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's so easy to do the follow-up now, right? Because it's, yeah. it's like they're on the list and you do that regular email. And I've had people who have contacted me, but I've had a guy recently in the last year, he kind of, I think he'd been on my list for like seven to 10 years. And oh, wow. Yeah. And he's gone on to spend, you know, I mean, he's gone on to spend, it'd be five figures with me. Plus I've referred him to two other people that I work with and he would have spent five figures with them as well. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And this is like, Years later, yeah, and you finally yeah. get that. You finally get that inquiry. I had a guy I've worked with in the last month, and he's been on my email list. I remember going and having a going into his offices when I first started. The first year I started my business, when I was like, I don't know, that would have been like twenty years ago. And uh, yeah, right. Yeah, wow. And he called me like, and he's been yeah. So it's just that if you stay in touch, if you're you know. It, it's the old fridge magnet thing, right? How many times have you, if you had a plumber, you go, they were great. And then you try and reach out, remember who they were like two or three years later and you just got no idea. And there's Yeah, you can't remember unless there's a, still a fridge magnet or a bloody pen or a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something. And imagine if they yeah. emailed you every week, you know, like. like yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you know? so. Yeah, like exactly. So much to get a client. Like, if like these guys, let's say, you know, they're paying like, 10 bucks a click or whatever on, on, uh, on Google and they can send emails for free. So it's I, I, like, I, I, there's a combination of things that most people can do. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I've got, there's obviously the database, there's the follow-up system that you can do that can easily double the sales that you're getting with your existing lead flow. But, but there are so many people that are just, oh, it's, you know the wastage part of it is just I'm just going to keep shoveling more into the front into the top, 
even though the bottom is just leaking like a sieve. Yeah. You know, it's like a, like, yeah, it's like a, um, you know, fly wire in a submarine. <laughs> yeah. 100%. 100%. And that's where the, that's where the opportunity, because it's almost like this obsession with, you know, like that front end. Uh, and you do need, I mean, they're all equally important, right? If, if you've got a, if you've got a, Soccer team, you know, you've got to have defenders and you've got to have strikers, and yeah, like they're, they're, they're all important as part of the as part of the team. But I think more people pay attention to that, yeah, that front end part rather than that back end part, and it's just so valuable. I mean, I found one of the one of the best things is, and it's quite simple, and this is probably more of a sales thing than this is an email thing. But whenever I finish a finish a meeting, it's like book a meeting from a meeting. So yeah, if I have a meeting, always. it's like, let's, let's, you know, even if the project's finished, let's book in six months, let's check in how you're going. So, and like just that simple concept or sending an email a week, those, those simple concepts could be worth, I mean, five, six figures a year to anyone, anyone listen to this. Yep. That's so true. I mean, the, the you know, a couple of things that you mentioned brought up, um, I we, we ran an event in Sydney in 2005, 2006, and same thing. There's this guy that had been on our database. He attended that event, hadn't heard from him, or you know, or, or you know, for, certainly hadn't contacted me or had any conversation with him whatsoever. Must have been, I reckon it was eight years later, and um, and it was I'll never forget. It was around about this time of the year. And I sent out a nine-word email, you know, something to the effect of, you know, are you still, you know, are you interested with working me on your, working with me on your sales process? That was it. And you know, I, I was probably pretty new at it back then. I was really just sort of testing it out, to see what would happen. This guy responds and says, "Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I want to work with you." And you know, so then I speak to him, and I said to him, and, and this was when I had two kids, uh, and I was a single dad, so I wasn't going to fly anywhere. And I said, "Well, look, I'm." I can't come to Sydney. He said, that's all right, I'll, I'll come over there. And so hadn't done a needs analysis with him, hadn't talked about what he wanted to do. Next to I ring him and he, and he says, oh, I've booked my tickets. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, said, I said, when do you get here? And he goes, the 27th of December, which as you know, like working with clients in between Christmas and New Year is like is just totally unheard of. Yeah. He's already booked his tickets. I haven't even told him. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing with him. And I don't even know how much I'm going to charge him. And he doesn't know. And he's already booked tickets. He's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you just never know when they're going to be ready, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It was and just, just from sending sending an email out every week or every other week, you know? 100%. And it's the same with, it's the same with all of us, right? Like there will come a time and you'll be like, you know what? I really need to focus on fitness. Or do you know what I mean? Like maybe someone you love passed away or something like that. And you're like, Health is my number one focus now. And if you're the health guy is sending an email every week, you're most likely the person who's going, who they're going to reach out to. Uh, so, and that could be in any area of your life. You go, oh, you, you, someone loses a big client, big project goes down. Oh, I need a, you know, I need to get good at sales. I need to get good at marketing. Who's, who's front of mind? That's really what it boils yeah. down to. Yep. Once it's back on the radar, um, and, and you're the one that they read, you know, that an email comes through. They, oh wow, your timing's amazing. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> uh, well, it wasn't for those other fourteen hundred and ninety nine people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? What do they say? Uh, um, success is where uh, opportunity meets. Uh, habit or something or something to that effect yeah yeah well i look at it as like it's, it's like optionality right like so the yeah. more the more um yeah the, the more times you're being seen the more likely things are, are going to come off it's the same with networking like the more people who know about you the more deep relationships you've got all of that sort of thing the more opportunities but you don't know when those opportunities are going to happen they're going to happen when they happen it's the same with email or, or doing social media or any of those things or podcasting. You put it out and you, you actually don't know. But if you've got a thousand podcasts out there, you're going to do far better than if you've got, you know, two podcasts out there. And yeah. likewise with email, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that and and I, I I noticed even just from a from a search perspective, once I got above 150 episodes, um, I started to get a lot more listens. It was something that something that switched over. But but yeah, it's like you know the more stuff that you've got out there, you know, I I, I never thought I'd have 100 and fi- more than 150 podcast episodes. You know, I, I didn't think I had that much to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so there's always there's always some you know I always come up with something. I sometimes I worry. I go, wow, well, I wonder whether I'll where, where I'll actually run out run out of things to say. But there's always something that comes up. Well, well one of the best examples, you know, from a content perspective of like the the because that's one of the big problems people have with email too, right? They're like, what do I write about? I'll run out of I'll run out of things to write. I wrote an email every weekday for. Over a decade, I think I might have missed one day, and uh, and and so I was extremely consistent. And there was never a shortage of ideas once you, once I made that decision. But I read this I read this book. It was actually a maths book once, and it had it gave an example of a pack of cards, a pack of fifty two cards. It said if you actually shuffled the, a pack of cards now, and you laid it out, it says odds are you would come up with a different t- different deck than anyone has ever shuffled in history. And then it broke it down that just with 52 cards, the amount of variations of it, and it was in the, like the way it broke it down, but it was literally in the billions and billions and billions of variations with 52 cards, right? So wow. so that really opened me up to, there is like no limit to, when you apply that to content or anything like that, or even ideas, right? Like, like there's literally no limit. Um, as to the amount of ideas and the amount of content that we can create and the different ways that we can spin it. Yeah, it, it's, it's, um, yeah. There's, there's always something to talk about. You know, there's always a, there's always something that's topical. You know, so it's, it's a conversation that you've had with, with someone that that sparks an idea that perhaps you haven't talked about yet, or perhaps warrants revisiting because something shifted. Like there's always a, there's always some kind of leverage in something that's going on that can spark an idea for something new, even if even if you're, you know, reusing something else, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who listen to the podcast want to know what we do over at Master Dealmaker Secrets, and effectively, what we do is we work with sales professionals and business owners all over the world who are seeing massive increases in their top line sales revenue. So we help business owners and sales professionals to effectively focus on the three key drivers to growing sales revenue in your business. The first one is controlling the message that you send out into the marketplace so that potential clients see and hear and read what you do as an opportunity as opposed to your competitors. The second thing that we do is we help you to create a direct path to the 20% of your ideal clients that will deliver 80% of the revenue. So everyone knows the 80-20 rule. We help you to develop a direct path to the 20% of the people that are going to give you 80% of your sales revenue in your business. And the third thing that that we allow you to do that we create a process for is for you to be able to double the amount of leads that you get that convert into paying clients. So if this is of interest, we do have an application only process to become involved in, in this particular program. And to, to get to there, all you need to do is, is to go to www.johnblakescall.com. So it's J-O-H-N-B-L-A-K-E-S-C-A-L-L.com. And there's a couple of questions to answer there. And then what you'll do is, is get on a, a quick conversation with me and I can find out a little bit more about what you've got going on in your business and see potentially whether what you are doing would be a fit for what we could help you with. And at that point, I can extend an invitation if it's a fit and uh, you can make the choice to come on board or not. So uh, that's the opportunity. That would be the next step if you're looking at how you can take things to the next level. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast, if you're getting value from it, uh, I invite you to do that and uh, I will look forward to talking to you. The website is www.johnblakescall.com. Talk to you soon. So you, you said that you wrote an email a day for a decade. How often do you write now? In terms of emails? Yeah. Uh, it's probably, 
I try to get one out at least once a week. Yep. Um, is really what I what I what I am. I actually want to get back to doing more and even more for social media and all that sort of thing. It's just yeah. more of a. Uh, I've got a lot more, I guess, a lot more on my plate now. So I I struggle to get them out as regularly, but it is such a good habit because when I was doing that, like the level of relationship and connection you actually build with your list, like some people say, oh, you're emailing your list too much and all that sort of thing. But it is just incredibly deep, you know, when you are really consistent with that sort of habit. And I think the same now, back then we didn't really have LinkedIn and social media and all that sort of thing, but I'd really like to, and this is where I'm quite excited if I can, um, yeah, if I can also leverage AI and transcripts and get the right system for that, I'd really be, I'd really like to get several social posts out a day because I think you can really dominate if you can do it with, if you can get them out so they're quality, um, yeah, and they're, and they, yeah, they really appeal to a, to a target market and do that regularly and in a systemized way. I just think that that is really powerful as well. Yeah, I, I look back on the emails that I that I sent when I was writing them at least once a week, and and it's it's also like you get better, like you become more conversational, like you they, they read better. Like I I have a, a team that puts a email together to promote each each week's podcast, but they send it to me and I tweak it and make sure that it's you know stuff that would come out of my mouth and. But in addition to that, it, just recently I've been thinking I need to write more. I totally need to write more, and and for that exact for that exact reason, you know, I think one, you know, you get ideas out of your head faster rather than you know an idea coming to you and you're thinking, oh yeah, I'll you know I'll, I'll write write about that later. It's like the best time to write is 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 when it's in your head, because yeah. that's when it's that's when it's freshest, and that's also when it has the right energy behind it. Like I remember. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but I'm, you, you'll probably remember better than me. But they said that to write the best copy, you need to be excited. Like you need to have that energy behind what you want to do because that'll come out in 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 what you actually write. Whereas having an idea, you know, versus having an idea, you know, writing sort of the you know the, the cliff notes and then coming back and writing it later when your energy's lower, it's not as good. And I can't. I can't remember who said that. I don't know whether it was John Carlton or whether it was um, it was one of the you know what probably one of the better ones. But you know that that you would get excited before you you know before you actually you know get yourself psyched up before you wrote wrote stuff. I don't know whether you've read that anywhere. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I, I can't remember if I've read it anywhere specifically, but it's it's very much like that when you're writing copy because you're you're actually looking for that. Yeah, you're interviewing the client, you're diving in and diving in, and you just want to be, you, you, you're trying to sell yourself on the concept, yep. right? Like, yeah, like yeah. Going, what makes this unique and what makes it special and how do we make the offer? And and so, so you're getting it to a stage where you're like, hey, I'm so excited about this that, that I would I would actually buy it um, as yeah. a brainer if I had that, you know, if I had that problem. And I, I apply that with everything. Like I gave up, I gave up coffee um, probably two or three years ago. And I read a book called The Caffeine Blues, right? So I'm literally trying to sell myself on the downsides of coffee so that I can give it up. Um, so, which is very much what you're doing with your clients when you're when you're writing copy. You're selling themselves on the downside of their current approach to sales, for example. Yeah, so yeah. That they, so that they 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 experience so much pain that they go and and they can see that your solution is so easy. They go, this is a this is an absolute no-brainer. No-brainer, yeah. Yeah, and we can do it with us. We can do it with ourselves. Like if you want to, if you want to give up a habit or something like that, if you do enough research into how that, how bad that habit is, or how good that new habit is, I don't know. Something flips in your brain, and it becomes much easier to give it up rather than just going, "I shouldn't have, yeah, I shouldn't eat sugar." Yeah, that's not much motivation, but if you do the deep research and yeah, yeah, you're far more likely to, to eat less of it. So the other thing I was going to ask you, so you know, these I was obviously doing a lot of email campaigns. I was going to ask you what what's working f or what are you seeing working right now 
as it relates to deadlines. And the reason that I'm asking you this is quite self-serving. <laughs> I, I've got a uh, I've got a ten week certification that I'm launching in the new year, and I'm I'm, I'm you know talk about being excited. I'm excited about it. <laughs> it's um, I, I've I've run this one day masterclass. But it's a live event in Perth forever. But the downside is that if you don't live in Perth, you're probably not going to come. <laughs> yeah. You know, which which excludes a fairly large percentage of the people that live on the planet. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Perth, Perth's like another country for us. Yeah, for us over here. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. When I first when I moved to Sydney for the first time, I got off the plane, and the guy that greeted me at the airport, he said, "Welcome to Australia." <laughs> <laughs> So, so I've finally got this, and and the other self serving reason that I'm that I'm doing it is because I'm I've I've started to help people to find new additions to their sales teams. So I need a way of certifying some of the people that I've screened in, in the interviews, so that I've got a bigger pool of people that I can draw upon when someone says to me, "I need I need a good salesperson." So, you know, there's a couple of reasons for doing it, but like I've I've you know got it to a point where I'm. Ready to launch it. So yeah, I was just going to ask you what what, what are your find what are you finding is working well or the best as it relates to to deadlines? Yeah, to, de- to deadline. Like if I was doing a let's say a, a pitch for a eight week course, a ten week course, something like that. I, I don't think anything works better than you know like the whole product launch formula is what I found that just has worked for me over and over and over again. I don't think I've done one in the last, you know, six months or so, but mm-hmm. I have done them. I have done them recently, and it's just like, you know, it's it's a tease about what's coming. Yeah, it's like similar to you know when they sell concert tickets. Like if you know if Taylor Swift is coming around, they can make the tickets available at any time. But no, they go, oh, the tickets are about to become available, and then they create this big feeding frenzy, and they're all gone within like an hour and everyone's sitting by their computer and you want to do that in a mini way. You know, obviously we don't have that sort of profile where the whole world's going to get a stop for us. But, um, but within our list, you are like that, you know, that celebrity, if you like. So you're, you're, you're teasing them. So maybe, maybe several weeks out or even now you might just be seeding with like one liners in your emails, right? So they know it's coming up and then, to, you know, then a few days beforehand, you can start the launch, you know, maybe three to five days beforehand. Hey, I'm going to be launching it. Uh, then you have what I do and find works well is a pre-launch day. I make some big, big specials, big bonuses for anyone, you know, the first five people to order or that sort of thing. So it's like, hey, if you're one of the first, um, you know, it might be like, if you're one of the first five people to order, you're going to get this. And if you're the one of the first 20 you're going to get this, depending on the size of, size of your list and the launch and that sort of thing. And uh, yep. so, so then when it comes to launch days, like it's open and you get that. What I tend to, what I have found is that first hour gives you a gauge of how well it's going to go. Um, yes. So if they, if, they, if they bite in that first hour and you get just, it doesn't need to be a massive amount of sales, but just a reasonable amount like trickling in. And then it's just... You'll get a lot in that first day, and then I find you get quite a quite a few in the close, and you, then you get trickles that come through. And really, the way to look at a product launch formula is just like a sales letter. It's yep. just it's just cut up into pieces. So you want to hear yep. all the objections, all the hot buttons, all that sort of thing. And often you can yep. do the sales letter first, and then write the sales letter out, and then strategize your product launch based on that. Uh, so there, there are some nuances to it, but you know, you're like, okay, well, the, the opening, we talk about that. That could be an email. And then we cover this objection here. That's a really important objection. That could be an email and so on. So you, you roll it out. You can roll it out like that. Yeah, love that. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. I mean, so far, I've, had, I've certainly had a lot of interest in it. But, um, you know, with the gift of, of a fair amount of time in between now and the end of uh, Jan, where I'm going to launch it um or when, when i'm going to start it um yeah that'll be that'll be super useful that's awesome and it, and it reminds me of, I, I did jeff walker's stuff years ago <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful like i've used that yeah. that formula to like i've worked with we find this is in the last year or two we did one where we did a, a million million dollar plus launch using wow. that formula 
Uh, and obviously, wow. obviously, to do that, you got to have a big list. You got to have yeah, yeah. You got to have someone who actually has built up a really strong relationship with the list. So you're just you're coming in as a striker, right? Everything's been set up for set up for me where I can actually strike because they've given me the tools to strike. But we've yep, got yep. launches where it's like a million dollars, half a million dollars, done many, many six-figure launches uh, based on that, you know, that exact that exact formula. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's never really, you know, like I'm sure there's been times where we've done it and, the, you know, the, not everything was in place where it hasn't been a massive win. But it, it tends to just, you know, it worked 15 years ago and it still works today. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it's good. Um, yeah, another another uh, guy that I've known for a long time who does a lot of launches, uh, James Klobasa. Do you know James? No, I haven't met James. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a student of um, Jeff Walker's as well. And yeah. he, uh, he's, he still uses the same formula when he works with his clients. And what, what you can do as well, the beautiful thing about the launch is you can then turn that into a funnel. Uh, and I did that for a client years ago. So you use the launch because it, it's a waste, right? You do this amazing launch, you make all this money, and then you just throw yeah. it away and yep. that's it. Um, but you can you can sort of evergreen it where then you can turn that into a, let's say, a free report and then do the – and then use those emails after the free report to then yep. convert them. And it probably needs a few tweaks and that sort of thing in it. But, yeah, don't just throw the baby out with the bathwater after you've done no. the launch. Um, look at how you can repurpose it. Yeah, yeah. Love that. Or awesome. reuse the launch. Like You can use it like a year later, two years later, roll out something very, very similar if it's a, if it's a winner. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, the best thing about this 10-week thing is that um, – yeah, I just I'm really wanting to just get it right. I don't have massive amounts of pressure on me to 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 launch it. Um, other than the fact that I need to train some more salespeople, but that's all right. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm yeah I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, that's great. I'll do that. That's brilliant. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a it's yeah it's a it's a yeah winning winning formula. Yeah. Um. So what about um headlines or, or subject lines in emails like what can you tell us you know your process what you found useful in in creating headlines i know you've got a copywriting that sells um dot com dot au forward slash lp forward slash headlines um that you've made available which is awesome i'm sure that'll have some good hacks in it but uh anything in particular that you found works really really well when you're creating subject lines for emails or headlines yeah, so with with headlines, what's really what's really key, I think, is you write the headline last rather than first. Like a lot of people, you write, write it last. Yeah, so write it last because interesting, all, interesting. All, all the information's in your subconscious mind, right? So yeah, I, I do I do headlines. I've got one client for that I've been writing headlines for for. They've got an email list. They're actually email subject lines rather than email rather than headlines, but they've got a a list of. Yeah, you know, a couple of million, and I've been writing headlines for them for oh, close to two decades. Uh, yeah, subject lines for them, and it, it actually took me a while. I, I always knew write the headline last, but then I, I actually wasn't really doing that with them. And then I thought that's a bit stupid. And then then I <laughs> to, then I started to do it, and that's why I do it all the time now. Because what it does is it allows your subconscious mind to actually work out what the headline's going to be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Whereas, whereas otherwise you come up with a headline and you're sort of directing it, whereas yep. you can write the, the, the copy for it and your subconscious mind is just soaking in all of this information and all the inspiration comes from your subconscious mind, right? Like if I know if I know nothing about, I don't know, running shoes, doesn't matter how good copy, of a copywriter I am, doesn't matter if I'm a genius, if I know nothing about them, how am I going to write a good headline? It's, it's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, because I don't, I don't know about the target market. There's so many things I don't know. Whereas, so if I'm starting a project, and even if I've done the initial brief and done some research, I haven't dived into it enough and really, and really got it in my head. But if I then go, what I tend to do is I would write, whether it's an email, whether it's, a, whether it's something short or something long, 
I will, I will break it out and go, I'm going to talk about this, then that, then this, then that, then this, and create a flow for the sales copy, right? Then I'll write the sales copy, and I'll, I'll tend to try and write the sales copy as quickly as humanly possible, because that, I just want to get the words out on a, words out on a page, and that's where ChatGPT can be useful as well. I just want to get mm-hmm. it all out, because the real work, it shouldn't actually be called copywriting, it should be called copy editing. Because the real work and the real masterpiece is actually the front end of doing all that deep research and then the editing. The writing is the easy part. You're just like regurgitating, you know, regurgitating stuff. It's the editing, which is where, where the real mastery is. Then once you've all done that, imagine you're doing a project and let's say it's taking you 15 hours to write the copy. Well, by the time you've written the head, by the time it's time to write the headline, You've got 15 hours of information in your head. So it's far more likely that something that's going to come up that's going to be amazing than if you don't. And the same with your, let's say you write an email, your mate, your best headline, and it might only take you 15 or 20 minutes, your best headline might be, obviously you've got to have a theme, right, that you're going to go and write a headline about. You've got to go and have an idea and a concept. But your best headline, when you read through the email, you're like, that's it. And it's three-quarters of the way into the email, and you throw that up and make that your subject line. And then you change the opening to adjust it, and there's your and there's your copy. Uh, so, and that's often the case when you review sales copy. It's like the best headline is like eighty percent of the way down to the in the sales copy, and will probably never get read because their their headline their current headline is crap, right? So they never get to the good part. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and I've I've even as you as you were explaining that, I I, th- I think I've even had the opposite happen where I've written a headline and then started the the actual copy and gone, oh, this doesn't fit the headline I just wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I mean? And, 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 then, and then you're sort of in this space where you're like, well, well, you know, now the, now the, the headline's directing what I'm writing rather than – and I feel like I need I'm, – I'm limited and I can only go in a particular direction, which limits the way that the copy's likely to end up. So yeah. I've, I've experienced that where I've kind of made a rod from my own back. I've written a headline and gone, yeah, this doesn't actually really fit now. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's an explorative process when you write copy, right? Like it's, yeah, yeah. It's, you might have a theme and a, and a big idea. You need to have some sort of idea that you start with, you know, in terms of yep. the angle you're going down. But, but as you go through it, you're like, you're like, oh, I can come at it. And this is what I found because I've, I've written so many headlines over the years, and I've had I've probably written more headlines and seen more headlines with split test results and that sort of thing. And I'll tell you, if you remind me at the end, I'll tell you probably the most powerful four-letter word that you can include in an email. You. Um, it's not you. It's probably uh, not anything that you've that you've read in most of the books because I sort of interesting it by chance. Um, but but the um, but the 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 whole thing with with you know, with writing copy. Is, is you'll, you'll see a piece of copy and you go, there's actually half a dozen or a dozen angles that I could come at it from. Uh, and, if we, and if we go next level, right, with that, then, then you think, well, that's, that's actually what you should do. You should actually then spin that sales letter. If we're looking at best practice, which probably very, very few people do this, but you should spin the, that sales letter into six or 12 different sales letters and come at it yep. from all different angles and see what works best. And yeah. it's the same with Facebook ads, right? So they found that the best, I think it's like the top 1% of 1%, because um, I know the Facebook guy who like does it for you know, companies like ClickFunnels and that sort of thing. I think he said the top 1% of 1%, they split test like way more than the average. And that is the key difference is they use yeah, more yeah. than even they split test more. Yeah. Yeah, split testing's massive. Yeah, yeah. There's a hundred different ways when you carve it up. There's there's so many different ways that you can come at a particular product or service from. Like you look at a car, right? Like you can go, you can go speed, you can go safety, you can talk about the fact that I don't know, it's got the best Wi-Fi in it. Like like there's so many different ways that you can angle it. And yeah. You actually don't know what the biggest hook is going to be until you throw it out there and you and you actually test it. Yeah, you, you, and then you read it and you go, "What jumps out?" and and then that's typically when you know when you realise that the bits that you need to keep and the bits that are, are the also rands. Yeah, 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 and that, that's where that's where um, 
that's where ChatGPT can be useful for the for idea can be extremely useful for idea generation. Yeah. So when I write a lot of headlines, I'll, I'll put the copy into ChatGPT, and I will say, "Hey, give me twenty examples of headlines." You know, actors Gary Ben's Avenger, actors Gary, actors Dan Kennedy, actors, um, and and each each different writer will give you a different angle too when you put it into ChatGPT. And it'll come back. So all of a sudden, you've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 headlines to choose from. And you can then go through, and generally, I don't use any of those headlines, but they spark the ideas, right? And I'll go through and I'll I'll highlight or I'll bold the good parts from each of those chat GPT suggested suggested headlines. And I'll bring them together so it's something that really pops. Awesome. Is um, is Gary Benkavenga, is he still writing copy? I don't know. He's not. I don't think he's – I think he retired from, like, client writing maybe a decade or so ago. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. My memory's right. But I think he's maybe doing his own projects and that sort of thing. But yeah. I, don't, I don't hear a lot about him these days. But he's, no. Um, I was just like, when, when you said his name, I'm like, whoa, that's a name I haven't heard for a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Because I like him, I like him because he's he's good for like yeah fairly conservative professional sort of headlines. If you want to go a bit edgy with your copy, you go like Matt Fury or yeah, yeah. Dan Kennedy or John Carlton. Like so, there's different styles depending on yeah. who you're writing for um, or what sort of style that you want to you know you want to get across. And if you want to write in your style, you can actually feed it one of the emails that you write and then. Yep. Ask it to write more closely to that tone and style. That's actually a good idea. I've because I saved all those emails when I when I um, when I changed CRMs. I I saved them all and put them in a Word doc, so you can just upload all of those. Yeah, yeah, you could upload yeah. them as a PDF and say, "This yeah. is the you know, this is my tone." Um, yeah, interesting. And, and then you can sort of plug it in, you know, plug stuff in from. From there, but yeah, it's all about ChatGPT is actually all about editing, um, yep. as much as as much as anything. But it can it can obviously write a slab of copy a lot faster than any human can. Yeah, um, but you've got to be a really really good good editor. editor. Yeah, um, and not many people are a good no. editor. No, yeah, no, that's true. Very true. So, um, so mate, there's a couple of other goodies that you've uh, made available, which is awesome. Thank you again. Um, the other one is a simple mail roi.com forward slash AI. Yep, simple email so, ROI. So, so, so simple, oh, sorry, simple email. So, two E's simple email roi.com forward slash AI. And then yeah. your um, website is copywriting that sells um, So, mate, it's this has been epic. This has been really good. Is there anything else that you would like to cover off on, or that you think's relevant, or um, you know, a, another resource that that's that's not on this list that you think would be useful? Well, I mean, I mean, I don't think so. I think. Uh yeah, I think I think those 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 resources are, are quite useful. And, and all I would say is, if you're looking to, I think it's more important now than ever to yep. understand the found the foundations of your craft if you want to leverage you know technologies like AI. Because yeah, yeah, like like for example, let's take Mid Journey as an example, right? If I was an yep. artist, I can go in there and I can create something that's quite yeah, that's that's half decent. But if I was an artist, I could I could I could make magic happen with it because I could say things like you know give it you know this you know this particular tone of grey and you know this lighting shade and all of this sort of stuff. And obviously, I know none of that, so I I can't create incredibly good art. But with copy, I can. And and I know all the all the great copywriters and the templates and you know things like the Wall Street Journal, the Journal Letter, or um, you know all of these sort of uh, you know Gary Halbert's you know twenty cent letter or penny letter or whatever it was called. So I can I can program it with all of that all of that information. But if you haven't done that research, if you haven't done that foundation, if you haven't done that deep work, 
Yeah. And all you're going to spit out is, is um, yeah, is just yeah, the same thing as everyone else can spit out. And that's not a way to differentiate your, your writing, you know? So, no, no, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And and you've you've clarified so much of that here because I'm sure that there's people out there that are that are kidding themselves asking chat GPT to write things for them that think that they're good and they're actually not. Yeah. And 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 I think even if some of those people were to revisit some of the things that that they've been doing and and then with the constructive ideas that you've shared around how to do it, like i.e. transcribing their own conversations using some things that they've already written, getting ChatGBT to act as writers that have a particular style, um, you know, this could change a lot of that for a lot of people that are listening. So, um, mate, it's, it's been awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. I, I uh, had a feeling it was going to be fun, and uh, it certainly has been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, likewise. No, thanks, thanks for inviting me and, uh, yeah, asking, asking such great questions. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. My pleasure. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies and maximize your sales process with new episodes every other week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive, free, no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.